<laughs> All right, so we are uh, live now on Facebook and YouTube. <laughs> So uh, good evening uh, to all the venerable uh, uh, monks and nuns and to our late devotees. Um, and I would like to wish a happy Vesak to all of you. And uh, I would like to pay my respect to uh, all the uh, senior uh, venerable monks. I think Bhante Bodhi, Bhante Rahula, they are uh, senior to me. I would like to pay my respect to you. And uh, I would like to bring the blessings of the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha to all other junior monks and nuns and uh, to our lay uh, participants. <laughs> so for the first time, we allowed the lay people to uh, join the Zoom platform. <laughs> uh, so we are... Okay, before we start, uh, we also like to uh, wish you a uh, happy birthday and the blessings of all of us you know uh, for you to have a uh, good health a long life to you know guide so many uh, of us and also to inspire so many of our fellow buddhists oh, so on this uh, Vesak month we wish you a happy happy very happy and healthy birthday oh thank you thank you Bhante. happy birthday to you, <laughs> you. happy birthday <laughs> to you <laughs> Happy birthday, dear Venerable Sarnan Pala. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, Venerable Sir, now you are a uh, year close to your death. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's, it's Bhante Bodhi who knows me from those days. But to him, he doesn't know that I'm 50. I'm half century now. When, when I... I saw the announcement, the email announcement from Bhante Kusala saying that Bhante Saranapala is having his 50th birthday. I thought, impossible. It must be the 30th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> because I met him when he was just a summon era in Sri Lanka. Yeah. And it seems like just about 20 years, about, yeah, about 20 years ago. But it was actually, if you were 17 years old at that time, now it's, <laughs> that was 1990. So it would be 32 years later. So yeah. that's 49, but now it's your 50th birthday. So <laughs> quite hard to believe that time goes by so quickly. No? Yes, Bhante, I, I, I knew you when I was a novice monk, a teen monk, typical teen monk in Kandy. Anyway, so thank you so much. He's 50, has not seen his smile. So that's what we say <laughs> in the celebration. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you so much. So let us uh, begin our discussion <clears throat> by paying respect and homage uh, to the Buddha. So uh, let us recite Namo Tassa three times together. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. I pay my respect and homage to him, the blessed one, the worthy one, the fully enlightened Buddha. So once again, <clears throat> a very happy, uh, blessed, and peaceful uh, Vesak day to all of you. And happy Vesak, happy Buddha Purnima day. Uh, this is such a, a great 
a moment for all of us as the Buddhists around the world are celebrating the, uh, the Vesak. In fact, the real Vesak uh, day celebration was yesterday and all our venerable monks and nuns were busy with their Vesak uh, programs at their temples across the world. And today is just, uh, it's also Vesak holiday in Sri Lanka and other uh, Buddhist countries. Uh, so that's why we have chosen today to have this uh, special discussion. In fact, our biweekly uh, discussion was supposed to be uh, last uh, week, uh, but we skipped last week to have uh, this discussion on uh, Vesak Day. Uh, so I'm very uh, happy to see all of you. And uh, today, uh, for the first time, we allowed uh, lay devotees to be on the Zoom platform. Right until now, uh, we had only the monastics, the monks and nuns, then we gave the Facebook and YouTube live. But today we are very happy to have all of you. But I would like to introduce our venerable uh, monks and nuns. And um, so let me uh, begin with uh, uh, our beloved uh, uh, Bhante uh, Bodhi. Uh, he's joining us from uh, New York. Uh, and then we have uh, Bhante Yoga Vacharahula joining us from Washington, D.C. Um, and then we have uh, uh, Reverend uh, Samita Ratana joining us from uh, England. <laughs> it's midnight for you. Um, and then we have Aya uh, Sudhamma joining us from Charlotte, Buddhist Bihara in North Carolina. Uh, we have uh, Venerable Muniputto joining us from Seattle. Uh, we have Venerable Saranapala, he's another Saranapala, joining us from Vancouver, uh, Canada. And then we have Bhante Kusala, and normally he's here, but today he went to Sudbury, Northern Ontario. He's joining us from Sudbury. And uh, then we have Venerable uh, Shanta Sobana uh, joining us from uh, Los Angeles. Uh, we have Bhante Pevaratana joining us from Pittsburgh. Uh, we have uh, Bhante Sanat Vihari joining us from uh, Hollywood, Los Angeles. Actually, congratulations to uh, uh, Bhante Sanat Vihari. You were featured by The Guardian, <laughs> bringing the Dhamma to uh, South America, Latin America. I was very pleased to read that article. You're doing an amazing job. So um, we are very happy for that, okay? And then we have Venerable uh, Trudeau uh, joining us from uh, Florida. And we have Venerable Tataloka Bikuni Terry joining us from uh, California. And then we have uh, uh, Bhante Ananda uh, joining us from Cambridge, uh, Canada. We have Venerable uh, Nalaka joining us from California. And uh, for, uh, for the first time, I think we have uh, Venerable Soma Wangsa. Uh, I think, I don't know where you're joining from. Uh, not, not first time, second time, second Vancouver. Time. Oh, yeah. Vancouver. Okay, yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Vancouver. Okay, that's yeah, right. Second time. Yeah. I was, Bantu, okay, yeah, Vancouver. That's right. So, uh, yeah, thank you. And then we have Venerable Sumeda joining us from Ottawa. And uh, so, uh, I think these are the venerable monks and nuns we have for today's uh, discussion. And uh, I have uh, before we begin, I, I asked that question. Um, I have a kind request uh, from all our friends uh, who are watching us on Facebook and YouTube Live. If possible, please uh, share this program in your social media timelines for the greater benefit of uh, your friends and colleagues. Uh, you never know, this uh, sharing is, a, is a what we call giving a gift of Dhamma. <laughs> okay, it's a gift of Dhamma, Dhamma Dana. Uh, okay, we also have Bhante Sunita joining us from uh, Ottawa, Canada. So 
So we have very many venerable monks and nuns today, along with uh, our late devotees joining us from, I don't know actually where you're from, maybe from USA, from Canada, maybe from Europe. Uh, and I'm so happy to have all of you on this Zoom platform uh, together with all the venerable monks and nuns. Um, so <clears throat> I know you know, last year we had this uh, Vesak discussion and um, Bhante Bodhi uh, kind of uh, uh, suggested me uh, uh, a, a different uh, way to uh, have this discussion. And uh, this time Bhante Bodhi was very kind enough to send me a question, <laughs> actually, which I believe never has been asked. Even I myself, I never thought about that. I never asked that question. And also in uh, my academic life, I have never uh, heard any scholar or professor asking the same question. Uh, the question is, uh, is it really the case that the three events, birth, enlightenment, uh, Mahaparinibbana, uh, celebrated at Vesak occurred on the full moon of May. And in the Theravada Buddhist tradition, and of course, Vesak celebration is a celebration of the birth, enlightenment, and the great passing away of the Buddha. But in the Mahayana Buddhist tradition, and also in the Vajrayana Buddhist tradition, uh, they celebrate these three events on three different days or, or months, not in the same month. But we in the Theravada Buddhist tradition, we believe uh, maybe we were told, <laughs> maybe we were taught mm. that Buddha was born on the full moon day in the month of May. He became enlightened on the full moon day in the month of May. He also attained Mahaparinibbana on the full moon day in the month of May, month of May. So can it happen? So now today we all are here to have a friendly discussion. Maybe it's going to be a heated discussion. Uh, maybe uh, it's going to be a unique discussion. Whatever it is, let us respectfully uh, uh, you know, talk about uh, this aspect of the Vesak celebration. So I would like to begin with uh, the most venerable Bhikkhu Bodhi. Bhante Bodhi, what do you okay. have to say about this? Okay, um, first, <laughs> a disclaimer. I don't want to disrupt the tradition, the, Thera the traditional Theravadan practice of celebrating the birth the, pass the enlightenment, the passing away of the Buddha on the full moon day in the month of May. We will, this is a venerable, all a venerable tradition and we should continue to observe it just out of respect for this old yeah. tradition because of the antiquity of this tradition. And the fact that it's quite, now it has a global reach so that the Buddhists and even in the Mahayana countries now recognize Vesak or celebrate Vesak even though they might celebrate the other events in the life of the Buddha on different days, but they all agree in celebrating at least the birth on the full yeah. moon day of May. Yeah. But if I could, can you give me the capacity, the ability to share my screen? Uh, yes, yes, Bhante. Uh, okay. Let me, can you go to, uh, uh, okay. Uh, make him co-host. Uh, co okay, okay. Yeah, sure, yeah. Okay, but I see you can uh, share whatever you yeah. have. Okay, here we go. Okay. okay, this was something that occurred. Okay, first let's take the birth. Now, what should be said actually first is that in the canonical text, to my knowledge, we don't have these events in the life of the Buddha connected with any particular month or season. If anybody knows of a, a passage in the text that specify a month or a season when these events take place, please correct me. But I, I myself 
am not aware of any. But if we rely on the commentaries, and here is the Jataka commentary, the Jataka Nidana, the introduction to the Jataka commentary, which does support the birth of the Buddha in the beginning of the springtime, the Indian springtime. So that could provide some ground for assigning the birth of the Buddha to the full moon day of May. Though the text doesn't actually say that it occurred on the full moon day of May, but it says that, okay, so this is an account of the journey of Mahamaya, when she feels the time for her birth is drawing near. So she requests permission from King Sudodana to travel from Kapalavattu to her birth city of Devadaha. And so between the two towns, there was the pleasure grove of sal trees belonging to the people of both cities, Kapalavattu and Devadaha, this, the Lumbani grove. And at the time that she's traveling, the, the grove is one mass of fruits and flowers. So the trees are flowering. And then the queen goes into the grove and she grabs hold of a, the branch of one of the sal trees. And then the branch bends down within her reach. And then she takes hold of the branch and then was called the karma born winds begin running through her body. In other words, she goes into labor and then standing and holding the branch of the sal tree, she gives birth. So she gives birth to the Buddha at a time when the sal trees are blossoming. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's the important fact. The sal trees are blossoming and we're going to see the significance of that later. So that is for the birth. But now we come to the Mahab, to the to the Parinibbana, and here our text root text is the Mahaparinibbana Sutta. Okay, so in a early part of the Sutta, we read that the Buddha reaches the city of Vaisali, and when he reaches Vaisali, the time for the Vasa approaches, and so he instructs the monks to find a place in Vaisali to spend the Vasa. And he says, I will, myself, I will spend the rainy season in this very place in the village of Beluva. So this would be like a suburb, a village on the outskirts of Vesali. Okay, so when is the Vasa beginning? Probably sometime around the full moon of our month of July. Mm. And the Vasa is three months. So we'll be going to the approximately the full moon of October. Mm -hmm. Okay, now after the Vasa, we know this famous incident where the Buddha goes on arms round outside of Vesali and he's accompanied by the Venerable Ananda. They go to spend the day at the shrine. Then the Buddha makes this proclamation that if anybody has developed the Idis, the Idipadas, the four Idipadas, if they wanted to, they could extend their lifespan to the end of the aeon. And Ananda fails to plead with the Buddha to live on till the end of the aeon. Then Mara intercedes and he tells the Buddha, you said that you wouldn't pass away until your holy life had become successful, prosperous and so forth. All of this has happened, and so let the Blessed One come to his final passing away. The time has come for the Parinibbana of the Blessed One of the Lord. Okay, so then the Buddha says to Mara, the evil one, he says, don't trouble yourself. Before long, the Parinibbana of the Buddha will take place. Three months from now, the Tathagata will utterly pass away. Okay, so the Vasa has ended October. Maybe they're remaining, let's say they're remaining in the vicinity of Vesali. Let's give it a couple of more weeks. Just suppose hypothetically they're staying around two more weeks. So they come maybe to beginning of November. 
So three months from November, December, January, February. Okay, right? Okay, so this is the first indication that the Parinibbana of the Buddha may have taken place, let's say sometime, maybe January, February. Mm -hmm. Okay, now there's another big hint about the time. Okay, so he says three months I'll pass away. Okay, then the earthquake takes place. Okay, then the other big hint comes when the Buddha reaches Kusinara. So he <clears throat> asks Ananda to prepare a place for him to lie down between the twin sal trees. And Ananda does so. Okay, then the Buddha lies down on his right side, mindful and clearly comprehending. Then at that time, the twin solitaries broke out in full bloom, though it was not the season of flowering and blossoms rained upon the body of the Buddha and were scattered over the body in worship of the Tathagata. And I took, I quoted the Pali for those who want to see the Pali. The key phrase is Yamaka Sala, you know, should highlight this. Subha Pali Pula Hunti Akala Pubehi. So Akala means not the time, and Pupa is flowers. So it's not the time for it to flower. And then the Buddha calls, points this out to Venerable Ananda, saying that the twin sal trees are in full bloom, though it is not the season of flowering. Okay, then I did just a little search through Google to find some information. When does the sal tree flower? And the sal tree, the Indian sal tree, for those there are maybe a number of Sri Lankan monks here. I know in Sri Lanka, we have a tree that we call the sal tree. And it's also called the cannonball tree, but it is not the same as the Indian sal tree. Hmm. I was living in Udawatakeli and there was a big, a, a, I think it was a pair of trees there and we would call them, or at least the Sri Lankan monks would call them the sal trees. And they have flowers that look like this, hmm. if you know that tree. But yeah. that is not the Indian sal tree. That is a different kind of tree. The Indian sal tree has flowers like this. Hmm. If the flower of the cannonball tree was falling on the body of the Buddha it would be a rather unpleasant experience because the texture of the cannonball tree flower is a little bit like rubber, if you know that flower. And it's a little rubber ball is a bit hard. And so it would be like these hard rubber like balls falling on the body. But the Indian sal tree has very small, delicate flowers. And this is a close up. Okay, so the description of the sal tree, the key point. Okay, in dry conditions, it sheds its leaves from February to March. New leaves appear in the month of April and May, and the flowers mature into fruit in summer and the seeds ripen in June and July. So if the leaves appear in the month of April and May, then I would assume the flowers also appear in April and May. So mm. April and May would be the proper time for a sal tree to be flowering. And then also that's supported by this file, the sal flowers white in color appear in early summer. Okay, so in May, that would be the proper time for the sal trees to bring forth their flowers. Mm. <clears throat> but 
the Parinibbana Sutta says that the twin sal trees are in full bloom, though it is not the season for flowering. So it cannot be the month of April or May. And then three months after the passing away, when the Buddha announces three months from now, after the Vasa, his last Vasa, the Parinibbana will take place. That suggests late January or February for the Parinibbana. And then when we look in other Buddhist traditions, I, know, I believe the Far Eastern Buddhist tradition, China and Japan celebrate the Parinirvana Day as February 15th or the full moon of February. I think the Tibetans also celebrate the Parinirvana mm. on the February, on, on the full moon of February or February 15th. So that seems to support February, late January or February for the passing away of the Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was my contribution. <laughs> <laughs> As for the, the Enlightenment, I mean, we don't have any clear indications, but I would take it if the Buddha But this relies on the commentary, gave the first discourse, the, the um, Dhamma Chaka Pavatana Sutta, just before the Vasa began. So that would be full moon of July, roughly the full moon of July. And then he arrived at, okay, so he arrives at the Deer Park just before the full moon of July. And it takes roughly two weeks to walk from Bodh Gaya to Sanath. So he starts his walk end of June, beginning of July, roughly. And then he spends seven weeks at Bodh Gaya in the vicinity of the Bodhi tree. So that would lend some support to the idea that he achieved the enlightenment around the middle of May. The so middle of May, early May, say seven weeks to the beginning of July and 10 days to two weeks to walk from Bodh Gaya to Sana. So that would lend some support to the idea that the enlightenment took place roughly in the middle of May, though the idea that he gave the first discourse just before the first Vasa, again, it relies on the commentarial narrative rather than anything said in the Sutta itself. Okay, so yeah, that would be my, my contribution here. Okay, uh, thank you, Bhante Bodhi. I, I, hope, I hope it didn't ruffle any feathers. Or... Uh, no, no, that, Bhante, Bhante Bodhi, that is uh, really interesting. Yeah. Uh, what you have just uh, yeah. show, uh, showed, I think is, is categorically, you have uh, shown us hmm. where Buddha is talking about maybe his, uh, uh, well, you know, something he did not clearly mention that I was born <laughs> on this day of yeah. this month. Yeah. He did not say, I, I, I became enlightened on this day, or I, I attained Mahaparinibbana on this day. So my uh, kind of uh, question is, that how did we, the Theravada Buddhist tradition, uh, got into this uh, concept, like Vesak is mm. the celebration of the birth enlightenment and, uh, and, the, uh, and the Mahaparinibbana? So I think uh, Bhante Kusala raised uh, uh, his hand. I'm, I'm pretty sure he has something to ask or contribute. Thank you, Bhante. Namami Sangha. Um, well, um, well, to answer your question, uh, I really don't know where we got this, you know, full moon day 
uh, birth, enlightenment, and passing away into Parinirvana, where did that come from? Um, I thought maybe we can do a bit of search. I think the homework comes later after this discussion. <laughs> and the terms to use will be like Punnamiyang Divase or Vaisake, you know, terms like that and see if we can pull something from internet and support the findings. And uh, I do think that what Venerable Vikobodhi has found is quite interesting. And uh, I, I am aware about the Sala trees, the difference between the tree that we have in Sri Lanka mm. and the one in India. And it's interesting that Venerable went to um, find when these trees really fully blossom, you know, if it is the season in May. And in University of Theradhaniya, there is that white sala tree. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, which is not known among people. And when we, as children, when we grew up, we always associate the, the image of the Prince Siddhartha being born under the Sri Lankan sala tree. So. <laughs> <laughs> And the colors of it, and, and I think the rubber, rubber-like texture, you know, although it's beautiful, yeah, I, I can understand the, the discomfort someone would feel because there's so many petals fall yeah. under that uh, tree, and I think you may not want that. Um, so, uh, well, the question about uh, end, rain season ending. And then Buddha making a statement that I'll pass away uh, in three months and Venerable mm -hmm. Ananda not hearing that and inviting, not inviting the Buddha to uh, stay an eon. Um, I think that's, that's one place, you know, where this question may occur, but uh, I'm not sure if commentaries contribute to um, the question at all, you know, I did send an email to all the venerables to see uh, if they have found anything interesting, any reading related to mm -hmm. the subject. And uh, the fact that we didn't hear much from anyone mm -hmm. means maybe we are all uh, looking. So um, uh, that's, and I had something else also to share. I think it's not coming to my mind right now. I'll come back later. Uh, but thank you for bringing this up. Um, yeah. And uh, I think uh, this is super interesting. Yeah, thank you, Bhante Kusala, for uh, making that point. And I think, of course, as I said, this is an open discussion. Uh, it may be a heated discussion. Feel free to present your ideas. Uh, before I let Bhante Ananda uh, to uh, speak up, uh, I would like to acknowledge two more monks, uh, Bhante Jinananda. He normally joins us from uh, Ottawa. But he's visiting Sri Lanka. Right now, he's uh, joining us from Sri Lanka. It, it must be very early morning for you, Bhante Jinananda. Thank you for joining. And then Bhante Anuruddha is joining us from Cambridge. Uh, thank you for coming to this Zoom platform for this interesting discussion. And, uh, uh, and I see uh, Venerable, uh, oh, I see, uh, Bhante Jinananda, you went to Malaysia, not. <laughs> from Sri Lanka, no, there's a question from uh, kind of Venerable Ayya Sudhamma. Uh, she goes, what about Teri Gata 10.1, uh, Kaludai's verses inviting the Buddha to his hometown said to be soon after awakening? I think that's a very interesting aspect. Uh, uh, Ayya Sudhamma, do you have anything to say about that? Um, so yeah, I'm talking about the Taragata, Tarigata yeah. um, tag uh, 10.1, uh, where um, it is recorded that Kaludayan um, gave very flowery invitational verses to the Buddha uh, on behalf of the Buddha's father. And I think it is, I, the idea is that it happens soon after awakening and it's talking, he speaks about uh, basically spring-like weather. So that is something summer, spring, kind of weather, I think, mm -hmm. it's the very flowery description. So yeah, yeah, yeah. My thought, it's just, uh, uh, I don't, it just sort of places, uh, if if it holds water that that was soon after the awakening, it could 
could help place it seasonally. Yeah, thank you. And, and I think this uh, sala, uh, sala blossom, uh, could it be uh, similar to like cherry blossom? You know, cherry, <laughs> normal cherry, this is the season that we see the cherry blossom. So maybe these are the uh, same type of trees that blossom in the same time, cherry blossom and the sal blossom. Uh, and this is, we can discuss about this. Uh, Bhante Ananda from Cambridge, uh, Canada. Uh, what's, what are you trying to make up of all this? Thank you, Vikus and Vikunis and the participants. Of course, my idea is going to be a speculation. So it okay. could be far from truth, like uh, in the case, uh, in these type of discussions. Yeah. Uh, so what I find is that uh, we are thinking of an, uh, of an event which originated 2,500 years ago, where the world was more or less not secular, uh, or the secular state uh, concept was not very prevalent. So. Mm religions and uh, states have been very much together. And when, it, uh, when, when that happens, of course, wherever there's an ego, you also find uh, competition. So I'm trying to draw parallels from other religions that we see in the world map. And if you look at uh, the Christmas, they say that uh, it, th there's a big debate about uh, if it's a real uh, birthday of the Jesus. And there's also saying that it's a, um, it's a paganistic uh, holiday, which could then a, Latin, uh, a Roman holiday, which got uh, transferred to the uh, marking of Christmas, the birth of uh, Jesus. But then you also need to see that uh, historically, Judaism, Judaism and uh, Christianity has had a bit of rivalry. And even before Jesus came in to uh, become a uh, bee, uh, there was the Hanukkah, which was celebrated on the between the months of uh, months of uh, November and December so more or less uh, falling at the same time and then uh, we come to India where there's a Guru Purnima day happening in the month of uh, June July usually which is usual to celebrate uh, Vyasa who wrote Mahabharata and uh, this is my bias speculation could be uh, wrong but I think uh, had there been a religious affiliation with Buddhism versus Hinduism when it got transferred to Buddhism in India, probably there was some form of competition where people wanted to show that, uh, that's what people do uh, when you want to sort of uh, uh, look another event uh, not so uh, bigger, you have a bigger event before that. So it's just a very wild idea. Maybe it was like that, maybe it wasn't, but then it was to commemorate the Buddha himself, his uh, birth, death, basically a commemoration like Guru Purnima. So in this commemoration, somehow, my wild idea is that the birth and death got entangled. So it doesn't necessarily mean that Buddha was born and uh, passed away in the same day and even enlightened, but it was a day of commemoration, Guru mm. Purnima. So because of that, somehow it came on the month of uh, May and uh, became Vesak. So that's my very wild idea. Of what well, well that, that's pretty interesting. I, I, I think uh, that's what we all are trying to understand now how did this concept originate? Uh, like, you know, celebrating the three events in the same month on the full moon day. Uh, do we have any reference, maybe in the uh, Shila Lekana, uh, or, or do we have any, or, or does it come from the commentaries even? Uh, if you know, like I know that there, there were, uh, some uh, Buddha biography texts in Sanskrit, like Siddhartam, Sandranandam, and those Buddha biographies, uh, we see the, the systematic, uh, the, the events of the Buddha's life recorded in those texts. In, those were uh, composed uh, in the first century, AD or first century uh, BC, or maybe after first century AD. And then I think, I, I, I don't know whether you are fully aware of this book, it's called Gautama Buddha, uh, authored by Hajime Nakamura. And, and he has done extensive uh, research into the sutras and vinayas, uh, vinay pitaka, sutra pitaka, and also to, uh, and, and the commentaries, the attakatas. And uh, he actually is trying to prove like, how all these events took place. And I don't know whether you have seen this book, whether you have read it. Uh, maybe it's something to look at, right? Uh, uh, can you highlight this one, please? Uh, yeah, right. So that they all can see. Uh, pin, pin it, yeah. 
Yeah, that's right. Yeah, this book, uh, Gautama Buddha, is uh, a, bi a biography based on the most reliable texts by Hajime Nakamura. It's a green, green, that's what you can see. <laughs> uh, okay, anyways. So this is just, uh, I just wanted to bring to your attention of this book. And uh, I saw uh, uh, Venerable Tataloka Bhikkhuni. Um, uh, yeah, go to the academy. And uh, you were actually uh, were in winter retreat and you came out, you were busy and very happy to see you, Venerable Tataloka Bhikkhuni. Now, uh, what, what do you have to say about today's discussion? Greetings to all venerables. Namora uh, Tanataya. I'm here at our Aranya Bodhi Awakening Forest Hermitage on the Sonoma Coast, and we have just very limited satellite internet. So, can you give okay. me a hint? Can you let me know whether you're able to hear me or not? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Uh -huh, okay, it may go in and out, uh, just to let you know. So, I've been very interested in the topic of uh, some of the dates with the Bikuni Sangha, like the founding of the Bikuni Sangha, which in Sri Lanka is celebrated at the September full moon. I was trying to find, is there any canonical basis for this or anything in the commentaries? Where does this come from? And then also the Mahaparinibbana or Parinibbana of Maha Gautami, Maha Pajapati Gautami Terry and the Bhikkhunis. And then the Chinese texts uh, actually give dates for this, but the dates are only implied in the Gautami Terry uh, Apadana in the Pali text. It's, it's implied that the Buddha has made his announcement, but then in the Chinese text, it says explicitly three months beforehand, the Buddha makes his announcement of his own impending Parinibbana. And then she uh, also uh, then decides that is the time for her Parinibbana and the 500 Bhikkhunis likewise. So we find this stated then in the Chinese and in the Tibetan text. So that's interesting because that gives a precise date for her Parinibbana and theirs that's then connected precisely to the date of the Buddha's uh, own Parinibbana, that is three months beforehand. And that then would be on the um, link it to the uh, to the Theravada traditions, then that would be those three months beforehand would be around the February full moon according to the traditions, but as Venerable Bhikkhu Bodhi has said, that's not canonically stated. But what I wanted to share here is, you know, I've been involved in some research and discussion related to this topic before, particularly why is the Bodhi Day or the Enlightenment Day mm. celebrated on a different date uh, in East Asian traditions? And then why in the West has it come to be fixed on yet a different date, different but related date on our Western calendars? And so uh, looking into that, uh, then uh, something came up. I was wondering, is there anything in any of the Mahayana sutras or, you know, where do these dates come from in the East Asian traditions? Yes. So I was looking into that and then found that in the Mahayana, Mahaparinibbana Sutra, then it's mentioned specifically that the date of the Buddha's own Parinirvana is on the 15th day of the second month. Now, some scholarly work has been done on this, and where does this text come from? And it appears to have a South Indian Andhra Krishna River or Amaravati proto Mahayana source from the first century reign of Gautami Putra uh, Satakarni. And so then uh, this tradition also proliferated in the Deccan uh, area, uh, Karle, and, and then moved into the northwestern regions of Kandara and Kashmir. And from Kandara and Kashmir, through the Silk Road, this was then passed into China, Korea, Japan, 
And then these traditions established in East Asian Buddhism. As Bhante Bodhi was saying, Far East, Far East Asian Buddhism, but now that's spread around the world. So then if we look at the South Indian calendar, what is the second lunar month? Actually, that's matching with this time right now. That's the month of Vaishaka. Mm. So the, the difference comes then when it moved on to the Gandhara calendar and then into the Chinese lunar calendars. Because the Chinese lunar calendar, the second month happens at a different time which is where then the date comes up because of following the sutra, which says it's on the 15th day of the full moon of the second month, then that comes out to be a different, a different time uh, on the different calendar. And so I just wondered if that, if that occurred with um, uh, Parinibbana, where in South Asia, that was originally the same matching day, but switching over to a different lunar calendar and then even further now these days then switching that date on a east asian lunar calendar and putting it onto the gregorian calendar then we get three different dates because it's trying to put the same date on three different calendars without being able to connect them um, properly. So I wondered if that might have happened with the Bodhi day as well. I did some further research about that. And then I found a source in the Tiantai tradition that was quoting a particular text that I haven't been able to locate yet. It seems like it's been quoted, but might not exist anymore. And, or maybe it does somewhere and we'll be able to find it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, my, my proposition from all of this is that it might be uh, that we have uh, dates from fairly South Asian traditions that then as Buddhism spread came to be transposed onto different lunar calendars uh, and keeping faithful to those dates but on different calendars and even what's we're seeing now in the West saying Bodhi Day is February 15th and uh, no Bodhi Day is December 8th and Nirvana day is February 15th, like that, putting it on the Western calendar. Uh, something similar might be happening. It's faithful to those dates, but it turns out to be on a different date, even yeah, on I, a different I, month. Yeah, I, I, I think yes. that's very interesting, Venerable uh, uh, Tataloka Bikuni. What you said is very, if you have any um, articles or, or the books with respect to all this, what you just uh, uh, mentioned, uh, if you could share with us in our email communication, that would be of great benefit to all the venerable monks and nuns. And, and then later on, we can share with uh, other people too. And also, uh, we have uh, 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 two venerable monks raise their hand. And I just want to acknowledge um, two more venerables who just joined, uh, Bhante Uparatana uh, from Washington, DC, and also, Venerable Jo Chen is joining uh, us from Singapore, and she's the uh, Mahana, uh, the Buddhist nun. And maybe later on, Venerable uh, Jo Chen, I will be asking you a, a question: uh, how, how you have come up with all these three events in the Mahana tradition? How you celebrate the birth, enlightenment, and the passing away? Uh, so just hold your thought, uh, Venerable uh, Samit Ratana. Uh, from England, uh, it's midnight for you. You are an academic. I'm pretty sure, Venerable Samitrata, you have something interesting to share with us. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much. You know, there's no, no, there's no uh, uh, you know, it's not, not something wrong to ask questions. Buddha never said it's, it's a sin to ask questions. Nobody's going to go to hell for asking these questions or debating and all these things, okay? Don't worry. So this is a friendly discussion. Open up yourself. Venerable Samitra. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Thiruvan Saranai, most venerable Mahasangi. So it is a great privilege to attend this Dhamma discussion. So 
However, my subject is philosophy, so I am trying to make the sense of philosophy. How, what is the philosophical standpoint of on this topic? Mm. Then in philosophy, I have studied the metaphysics of mathematics. I think this is the problem. Some sorts of historical facts are unable to define firmly, and it is really unable to make the sense and reference accurately because uh, we have different mathematical systems. We have Gregorian calendars and South Asian calendars, some religious beliefs and lots of stuff we have. Then how we chose the most accurate and systematic and, uh, and coherent system. It is, it, I, think, I, I think it is a debate and it is the conversation here. So I think, I feel this is like a problem of metaphysics because planetary motion is really different and ecological science and environmental science are totally different. Then we have natural diversity. The natural diversity is also totally different by region by region, area by area. So, 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 so this is kind of planetary nation. Uh, however, uh, the, tra the tradition of Theravada Buddhism, I can put forward some evidences the in the sixth century BC in, in India, we have I, I I think we all know very well. We have no very precise and well known evidences. The Vesak full moon poet they had been celebrated there, but uh, in the fourth century BC in India, we have some Ashoka inscriptions mm -hmm. that that is very evident that some some ceremonial events have been there. Apart from that, similarly, at the same time, in the fifth century BC, the Chinese Beku Pahir has also denoted such an annual ceremonial event in each month of May, that means Vesaka in India. So in addition, if I say in Sri Lanka, the first record was appeared in the first century BC, with regards mm. to Mahavansa, Vansatta Prakasini commentary, and Thrupavansa, it, it, it is really apparent that. Uh, for instance, if I say uh, Mahavans, in Mahavansa chapter 11, 32, 36, I can quote and, and I can cite Vesanke Narapati Punnamaya Mevan, Devanam Pevachana Pogulha Namu. Lankayam Paditta Piti Utsavaya, Atanan Jana Sukadeva Siti, Mahavesa Kapuja. So in Mahavansa, it is clearly noted that. So afterwards, many rulers like Bhatikabe, Vasabe, Vuharatisa, Jetkatisa, Devanam Pietisa, Agbo have done this historical and religious event since the first century BC. So I, I, I think in my view, we have different traditional and mathematical calculations on this regard. Uh, however, in general, the, there is a philosophical matter towards the such kind of social and historical assumptions because these kinds of assumptions have real, have, have real difficulty how to make the real sense how to make the real reference, how they have been appeared. So it is kind of philosophical matter in my sense. Thank yeah, you. Th yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Venerable Samit Ratana for presenting your ideas. I, I think it, is, it would be better for all of us to uh, read, of course, Bhante Bodhi. It started with the references to the sutras. And also, I'm pretty sure uh, in the Atakata, in the commentaries, there are more details uh, about these uh, observances, celebrations, and then the chronology called text, like in Sri Lanka, Mahavangsa, or Deepavangsa, Chulavangsa, those texts also talk about all these things. And I, I see it would be nice for a, a, for a monk or nun to do another PhD on this topic. This is the PhD thesis, you know? <laughs> So, Venerable Muniputto from Seattle, uh, what do you have to say about today's discussion or in, in Cambodian tradition? I know you're of Cambodian tradition. And yeah. uh, in your tradition, uh, how do you see these three events? 
Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Ponte Srana Pala. First of all, let me say happy birthday to you. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and respected Honorable uh, Mahasangha, and especially most Honorable mm. Pico Poti. And thank you, uh, respect to all Honorable uh, Pikunis as well. Uh, yeah, according to Cambodian uh, Buddhist tradition, actually we uh, also uh, learn this by heart we remember the dates of uh, the events of the buddha uh, we have this in the chanting daily chanting if i may uh, raise it from the book of our chanting you know traditionally most of our Cambodian people recite this every day when we do the evening chanting or morning chanting we have this from the pasito wat you know pasito wat uh, a few verses that talks of the date of the Buddha's event, you know, that happened in the lifetime of the Buddha. Mm. So the, yeah, I'm sure that uh, everyone is aware of the Avata Padimokha that start from Ukasa Yobana Dhamma Nudhamma Padipano, we had a Tisamiji Padipano, something like that. And then we have, um, uh, okay, let me skip to that verse that talks of the date. Okay, so first we have these verses. Kukude kapahvaso chaso ne chutaranakami utsaphe raja sampati sase papachito chino. So I'm trying to translate into English. Uh, forgive me if uh, uh, if you cannot understand well my translation. So here it talks of the Buddha taking conception in the womb of the mother in the year of the, the rooster. So wow. according to the yeah the twelve horoscope, you know, I think basically we have this influence from Chinese uh, horoscope, which has the twelve uh, like zodiac signs. So here the date that talks in Pali. Uh, so the Buddha taking conception in the mother's womb uh, in the year of rooster, and then was born in the year of the dog and then became like crowned, became the prince in the year of the ox. And then he ordained in the year of the uh, rabbit. Okay, let me move on. Kukade sapanyu putho tatachakang bhavataji nibbana gamanang sape sahasa pancha musike. He became fully enlightened in the year of the rooster and he uh, preached the Dhamma Chakka in that and also in that year and he attained fully Brindibana in the year of the snake and uh, buddhist era will be fully five thousand year in the year of the rat okay let's move on one more okanto chakruvarasmeng sukravare janikami sambutho buddhavarasmeng angare nipari niputo the buddhas take conception on the day on thursday and was born on friday and became uh, the buddha fully enlightened in uh, on wednesday and the Barinibana on tuesday and then asalha punnamo kanto visa ke ye wa nekami visa kaponami sam buddho visa ke puto the buddha's take conception in the mother's womb on the full moon day of Asalha, Asata, so this uh, taken con, uh, con, conception on the full moon day of Asalha, and then he was born on the full moon day of Visakha, and then became fully enlightened on the full moon day of Visakha, also Brinipan on the full moon day of Visakha. So according to this text, uh, which means the Buddha's birth, enlightenment, and Brinipana falls on the 15th full moon day of Visakha, and similar to what uh, Venerable Tata Loka has just mentioned that maybe because of the calendar we use, uh, there's some similarity about that. And in Cambodian lunar calendar also, because uh, we, we start counting uh, the, what we call the Mikasi in Pali language is called Mikasira. Mikasira is the first lunar, lunar month according to Cambodian uh, calendar as well. So Visakha actually is the sixth month in the Cambodian calendar. But if we compare it, we can see that uh, something around May, between May and June. So they assume that the Visakha uh, can be matched with the months of May. That is why in our tradition, we recite this, uh, the, the date of the Buddha's uh, events uh, 
in our daily chanting as well. So I don't know what where we can we get this, but uh, according to this take from Pasito Vada, so we have this date of the Buddha. So like yeah, can, yeah very good, uh, Muniputu, That's really interesting. You know, uh, like how you describe all these three events uh, with the months and days uh, and the year of rooster, year of dog, and all these things. Uh, I think, can you please in the chat box, can you write the uh, name, the title of the book? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and, and the, what century it was composed? Okay. Uh, if you can share, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. And uh, Bhante Jinananda is, uh, uh, is joining us from Malaysia. Normally, he lives in Ottawa. Uh, he's visiting Sri Lanka now from Sri Lanka, he went to Malaysia. So Bhante Jinananda, what do you have to say about today's discussion? Uh, greetings to all venerable, including Bhante Sanapal for your birthday. I miss <laughs> your birthday. Anyway, wish you good health and peace of mind Thank you. to continue your services. Um, so the discussion so far uh, tells that having one day for the three events is good enough because uh, we don't have any agreement. Uh, canonically or any from commentaries, we don't have any evidence so that the scholars who put this day uh, should be the uh, day that we commemorate the triple anniversaries of the Buddha would be good because uh, we don't have any evidences. The other thing is that the Tripitaka uh, is for the Dhamma uh, or to store the Dhamma of the Buddha at the time the Tripitaka was uh, written down, uh, they did not consider very much of those days that, are, that were not in you know, agreement. Uh, like today, I believe that the dates of the Buddha's main event were not in agreement so that they did not include any of those things uh, in those important texts. So we do not look at the Tripitaka for chronology, though we try to uh, grab some events and uh, occasions. <clears throat> uh, so I think uh, uh, the, the disciples in later uh, periods uh, were, uh, were considering only the Dhamma just to commemorate the birth, enlightenment, and passing away of the Buddha. If you look at uh, Acharya Buddha Dhamma Sutta in Majjhima we have those evidence, you know, important incident happened, but without the date. And then Arya Paris Nasut and Mahasachaka Sutta uh, gives us, uh, give us uh, some evidences on how he attained to enlightenment with hardship. And of course, the Mahaparinibbana Sutta gives some information about how he attained to uh, Mahaparinibbana. So I think uh, the day of uh, Visakha is to commemorate these previous events, as uh, Bhikkhuananda said. So I think. Uh, different traditions says different things so that I think uh, it is very important for us to uh, get these three events and see the marvelous of his life uh, I, uh, to, to get some inspiration for our practice. So uh, since I have been traveling, I could not get into any of those early notice about the topics and things like that. Even now I have a hard time with the internet connection anyway. Yeah. Uh, thanks to those venerable monks who provided me the opportunity to participate. I think uh, let's celebrate Vesak just uh, in, in terms of uh, getting some ideas from the Buddha's life uh, to increase our practice, enhance our practice for our enlightenment. That's what I wanted to share today, Bhante. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you, Bhante Jinananda, for joining us. <laughs> And, 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 and presenting your ideas. And I think, uh, of course, obviously, there are a lot of sutras where uh, we see Buddha himself talking about his, his own events of life. Uh, even uh, uh, there is a sutra called the Appaya Sutta. I think it is the Sutta Itibuttaka Pali or Sutta Nipada. So anyways, there's an Appaya Sutta where we see Venerable Ananda is referring to Buddha's mother, <coughs> excuse me, Queen Mahamaya, dying after a short period of uh, his uh, Buddha's birth. And even that is another aspect to look into. I, I don't know whether uh, Bhante Bodhi 
could uh, uh, look into that, uh, that sutta, where Venerable Ananda is uh, mentioning to the Buddha that his mother died after a short period of his birth uh, and what time it took place. I don't think that it, I don't think that it mentions a particular time that it took place. Okay. Let me just try to find it quickly. Okay. Also, meantime, uh, Bhante Kusala raised his hand again. And what do you have to say, Bhante Kusala? Bhante, I'm going to Venerable Muniputto's comment about yeah. uh, the conceiving of Prince Siddhartha in Maha, Queen Mahamaya's womb. And it, in the, it says in the, in the commentary of Supavasa Sutta from Udana, this is the Supavasa Sutta uh, recording, well, the commentary recording about this dream the queen had, a white elephant entering her belly through the right side um, on the full moon day of uh, Asal, Asala month. Mm. And and that means, you know, uh, either ten, nine or ten months after um, the prince was born. Um, some, I think, in some uh, Vansakatha's chronicles, um, uh, I don't want to mention names without fully, really um, verifying the names of these chronicles, um, say that it took sharply 10 months for him to, he didn't stay nine, he spent uh, 10 full months in the womb before he was born. So that actually brings us to the full moon uh, in May, um, not a February, like no, no premature uh, delivery date. So uh, that's, the, that's the, a little bit that I would share now, um, but this is getting more interesting. Like you said. <laughs> Thank you. But, but that is for the date of the birth, correct? Yes, yes. Not, not the date for the Parinibbana. It's the Parinibbana, no. which is the controversial one. Oh, I see. I yeah. see. I see. Thank you, Venerable. Yeah, I think Bhante Bodhi, that Apayu Sutta is in the Udana, I guess. Yeah, I'm looking through it. Yeah. Um, yeah uh, and next, uh, uh, Bikuni Tataloka <laughs> raised uh, her hand again. Uh, oh, Please feel free to add more insights. Yes, Bhante, thank you. Uh, just a moment. Uh, I just wanted to mention and to acknowledge one of the venerables earlier um, spoke about uh, the venerable Fashian, a pilgrim who came from China to yeah. India. And his testament in his pilgrimage record to the commemorations that were happening in India, in South Asia, uh, in the fifth century of the common era. Uh, and then that Acharya Buddha Gosa, uh, Bhattanta Acharya Buddha Gosa, who composed the polytext uh, commentaries in Sri Lanka around that same period of time in the fifth century then also is said to have come from South India. And so then these commentaries are actually concordant with what we find testimony of being celebrated in India uh, at that time. But it is a thousand years after the Buddha. And when we look at Xuanzang, then in the seventh century, he notes that in India, different Buddhist traditions or, or different Buddhist, I guess you could say sects, but anyway, different Buddhist schools actually have their main observances or commemorative dates on different dates. Mm -hmm. So that's something that's recorded actually as happening by the seventh century, even in India by Xuanzang, that different traditions have then gone to commemorating these great events on different dates. So mm. I just wanted to share that, yeah. that part, that is our polytext commentaries do have a direct connection to what is attested to actually being commemorated in India uh, in the fifth century. Yeah. But Xuanzang yeah. two centuries later says different traditions have already in India have different dates. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, you know, I'm very happy to see you know how we all are freely uh, presenting uh, uh, what we know. I think this is all about 
sharing our knowledge. <laughs> okay, so uh, Venerable Trudeau from Florida. Uh, I know you, you, uh, you are a Theravada monk and also you have a, a, a Vietnamese background too, um, I believe. And uh, so maybe Vietnamese Buddhist tradition and what you know. So what, uh, so please feel free to uh, present your ideas. Uh, you have to unmute, unmute yourself. Salutations to all the most venerable uh, bhikkhus and bhikkhunis and ayahs present today. Thank you for having me. Yes, I was born and raised in Vietnam. I immigrated when I was seven years old. So I've been in the United States for about 27 years now. Mm -hmm. um, the Vietnamese temples mm -hmm. <clears throat> and monasteries is uh, a little funny when it comes to the, the dates because they try not to overlap each other. <clears throat> I live in St. Pete. So there's multiple monasteries and they, they separate the, the weekends out um, and not you. It's a rare thing to find one weekend where both temples are celebrating Beisak. This Today's discussion caught me by surprise. I'm usually the last one to get the, 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 the message yeah. about what's going on. I had a couple of uh, students that's asking me, what's, what's this debate where we're a little lost? Um, <laughs> young students, I wanted to capture this moment and contribute uh, what the UN said. And um, I also like to pay my respect to Venerable Bhikkhu Bodhi, whom inspired me for so long. And what a auspicious event to have seen you here present with us. And I was quite inspired by Bhikkhu Bodhi's speech at the UN years ago. And so I wanted to capture this in contributing what on to, in 2016, uh, on day of Vesak, the UN chief in 2016 says Buddhism can help enlighten the world about pressing issues. Uh, as I read this small paragraph, uh, observing the day of Vesak, United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon highlighted how the teachings of Buddhism can help the international community tackle pressing challenges, including mass population movement, violent conflicts, atrocious human rights abuses, and hateful rhetoric aimed at dividing communities. Uh, it is uh, on the day of full moon in the month of May, it's the most sacred day to millions of Buddhists around the world. It was on the day of Vesak, uh, da, 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 the Buddha. Uh, I, I see, I see. Um, so the, <clears throat> I just wanted to, to say this, on the, this day of Vesak, let us pledge to reach out to bridge differences, foster a sense of belonging, and show compassion on a global scale for the sake of our common future. Uh, just a couple of days ago, um, they wrote a letter again in the UN and talking about that the Buddha taught that we must always be mindful of our action, draw upon our inner strength and embrace the power of collective action. We would do well to heed these lessons as we confront today's challenges from climate change to pandemic inequalities and conflict. So it seems like nothing has quite changed dramatically <laughs> since 2016's latest uh, comment on here. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to, to read this out um, as most of the younger students trying to get a hold of all the suttas and the uh, monastic scholars discussion, but I just wanted them to focus uh, on what the UN said about this, uh, about what's most pressing right now in the world, direct, immediate, uh, a sense of urgency and using VESAC in applying what we can do to mitigate these, uh, these harms in the, in the United States and across the world. Yeah, I, I think very much, Trudeau, we, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting. We had to, of course, focus on that. And, and it, today is a, a specific question that, uh, that was raised by Bhikkhu Bodhi, whether these three events really took place <laughs> on the same full moon day of the same month. And, and it's, it's a very interesting question though, you know? So uh, Venerable Ji Chen uh, from Singapore, I know you're in the Mahana Buddhist tradition. So in, in your tradition, uh, I, 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 we know these uh, three events are celebrated uh, three different days and months. Uh, so do you have, what do you know about these three events in according to the early Mahana texts? Okay, uh, 
Good morning, everyone, or good evening, everyone, and auspicious greetings. So uh, just now, the uh, Venerable uh, Bikuni, she mentions about in Mahayana, Xuanzang and Yi Jing, which is true is that different uh, sects or different schools, they come up with the different comments on the date and also the celebration. So first thing is that these three, three events, did they really happen in a full moon day? I guess nobody knows whether mm. it really happens or not. So ends up is that different uh, traditions, uh, different schools, they fix a particular days for celebration. But at least uh, for the Buddha's birthday, most people celebrate in the full moon day for the visa day. However, I would like to share is that in uh, in the Taiwan tradition or the Taiwan, Taiwan, they fix the Mother's Days as the Buddha's birthday. So the celebration for the Buddha's birthday will be the first week of May. Uh, for in Taiwan, but in other uh, in other Mahayana uh, uh, Buddhism, other countries, they most of them will celebrate on the Vesak day. This is one thing. Second thing is that in uh, in the Chinese tradition, Chinese Buddhism tradition is that for the Buddha's birthday, we have a practice is the bathing of the Prince Siddhartha. Mm -hmm. So it's a big ceremony with a very small uh, statue of the Prince Siddhartha and it. The event get more uh, bigger and bigger, but it's the bathing of the uh, Buddha, uh, the Prince Siddhartha uh, statue, and uh, and this this year I my first year I can't say my first year, but uh, in Singapore, my first time celebrating the Visak Day in Singapore Temple, and I realized that in Singapore the celebration of the Visak Day is so 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 um, busy and. Uh, I can't say grand, but a lot, a lot of people, very different from in the Western country. So people coming in to, uh, to do offering to bathing of the Buddha and also to do the offering, D donation, donating money to the monastic, and they like to donate a lot of money during the Buddha's birthday. Mm. Yeah, so that will be something celebrate in the May. And for the enlightenment date uh, will be in the December. Mahayana traditions also uh, celebrate that by cooking the konji. Uh, we call it the laba konji. Uh, it's a symbol to uh, represent that before the Buddha's enlightenment, somebody offered, the lady offered the milk to the, to the uh, prince so that the prince has the energy to meditate and enlighten. So during the enlightenment date, which is around December, some depends on the full moons, and then that will be something that we will cook a lot of the congee and then give it to people. And also people come to the temple to do eat the congee, the laba congee. But in, in, in the Chinese tradition, I don't remember people really celebrate the Nirvana day. Maybe chanting, but not a, a very specific type of celebrations. Mm, so Wonderful. They, yeah, so this is something that in the Mahayana Chinese, tra uh, Chinese tradition. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jian, for sharing uh, that information with us. And of course, we are coming to uh, the end of the, today's program. I know we uh, have more interesting uh, ideas to present, uh, but I would like to uh, ask, okay, Bhante Femaratana from Pittsburgh. Uh, I know you are, you are also an academic <laughs> and uh, what do you have to say about uh, this question, Bhante Pevaratana? So my reverential greetings to all the Sangha members. Uh, and uh, I, I really enjoyed the discussion uh, uh, and it's learned a lot, you know, from the contribution of all our, you know, our monks and nuns. You know, uh, one thing I'd like to share is that Bhante, you know, so we have to rely on early text uh, to decide, you know, whether, you know, these the three events happen on the same day or a different dates. But the issue here is actually Bhante, the, uh, the early text, uh, the people, uh, the, the monks and nuns and others who compiled or collected this early mm. text, they were not very much interested in the precision of the dates. Uh -huh. So that's the challenge that we have right now because they, uh, you know, when, whenever we see the early text and even, you know, uh, um, uh, mainly the Buddhist text, you know, they were not really very much of you know, um, uh, highlighting the specific or uniqueness of each event. You know, we can, uh, so, so if you really want to find answer to this question from our text, it's going to be re really hard because the, uh, those compilers, they were not interested 
uh, in, in giving specific dates. They were more interested in, uh, in recording these things and, and pro, pro, uh, presenting these stories as an inspiring stories, as something that we can remember, uh, as something we can, that can help us to practice, rather than giving a specific and historical account. Uh, of course, they have historical accounts too, but in, in, when it comes to particular specific dates, they, they didn't want to you know, limit these events uh, to a particular era. You know, they want to show these things as universal, as timeless. Mm -hmm. so we can see even you know, uh, in, 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 in some suttas, even the very life story of the uh, Siddhartha Gautama and our current Buddha is quite, uh, the, uh, it's not different from the life stories of the previous Buddhas, right? So you find in the, particularly in the Mahapadana Sutta, we can see how um, the, the life stories of the, all the seven Buddhas are quite repetitive. You know, it's mm -hmm. the same pattern follows in each Buddha's mm -hmm. life. So showing that, you know, this, uh, the enlightenment and this, you know, the life of an enlightened being uh, is, is something can be repeated uh, uh, and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's happened before and you know, the Buddha has rediscovered it. So do you have this circular repetitive you know, uh, uh, pa pattern of the life events of the Buddha. Mm. So I think what, <laughs> what we can learn is actually maybe you know, consider these, uh, uh, these events as something that you know, inspires us to practice. I think in that case, it, it can be really advisable and smart to select a good uh, one day, single day to celebrate all these three events. Uh, when it comes to celebration, I think uh, uh, I, I'm maybe May will be a nice time to celebrate, you know, yeah, because maybe, of the maybe beginning that of the reduces spring. the responsibilities and burdens of the monks and nuns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if the celebration, I'm particularly for the Northern Hemisphere, you know, having uh, May as a celebrate, the day, day to celebrate these three events is very, you know, a smart thing. But because if, the, if this day was so in December, or January, it will be really difficult to celebrate in real sense. Yeah. So I think, so let's, you know, I, uh, of course it's, you know, I, I think with the Vikubo, with, with this, uh, uh, you know, contribution, I think uh, we have to be, you know, we have to accept that it's, it will be more historically correct uh, to consider February as the, you know, month uh, uh, in which Buddha in uh, Mahaparani Ruan. I think it's clear evidence there. I think we are thankful for uh, Bhikkhu Bodhi to, uh, for giving us that. So historically, we'll be more correct. Uh, yeah. But, the, you know, the, the, what, we, what we need as Buddhists, do we need a historically uh, uh, precise date? So do we need a day to, you know, be inspired by or be committed to our practice more? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Bhante Bhavaratana. Uh, I, I think, uh, Bhante Bodhi, if possible, can you please share that note with us in the email communication so that okay. we all can... Okay. Yeah, yeah. One thing I wanted to mention that I had already sort of come across these facts about the Parinibbana Sutta where the Buddha says, in three months from now, I will attain, uh, I will attain the Parinibbana and the blossoming of the salt trees. I'd already realized this when I was living in Sri Lanka, and I thought, should I write an article for one of the Sri Lankan newspapers about this? But then I was afraid if I published that, there would be picketing outside my hermitage, and maybe <laughs> <laughs> when I went to apply to renew my visa, there would be my visa is canceled, fought seven days to get out of the country. <laughs> that would be another Aragana, another struggle. So I decided to keep quiet until now. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no, that's interesting, Bante. So now I have, we, are, uh, we have come to the end of the program, but we have a few more minutes. Uh, I would like to hear something from Bante Yogavacha Rahula. I know you were observing, and Bante uh, Rahula, uh, what do you have to say about all these uh, events, the time, timing? Uh, you have to unmute, Bante. Un Bante, you have to unmute. Unmute yourself. Uh, yeah, ask to unmute. Oh, there we go. Okay, here we go. We can, we can hear you. Okay. Well, I know the time is short, but uh, so 
Uh, I'm not a scholar, so you know I don't really have any input on whether those days are different or the same. But uh, in terms of how do we reflect on each of those events, like what is the the meaning of the Buddha's birth? What's important about the significance of the Buddha, you know, taking birth? What is the significance of his attaining enlightenment? And what is the significance of his Mahapari Nibbana, especially in terms of ourself and how can we relate to that? If we think it just happened to the Buddha on some days, we say, oh, well, that, you know, that happened uh, so long ago. But to really, you know, to bring it into ourself and to realize that taking birth, that we've all acquired a human birth and it's very rare to achieve a human uh, birth compared to the amount of animals and devas and beings in other realms. And, and so the, to, uh, to value that uh, and make the best of this human birth by uh, trying to be a good person and, and to make progress on the path. And then the attainment of enlightenment shows that, uh, you know, a person can uh, make progress on the path and can attain enlightenment and to, to give us the inspiration to, to try as best we can to practice. And then with the Mahaparinibbana is that we can leave this world without any guilt, worry, fear, remorse. We can leave this world without any attachment. And, and craving and to experience, uh, you know, utter uh, liberation. So that's how I've actually used this over the years uh, on the West Sock Day to reflect on these three events and particularly on myself and what am I using these uh, for? What is my practice of the monk life, my practice of the Dhamma? Uh, you know, is it making that uh, gradual progress toward liberation? So. This is what I think really is the most important aspect about the Vesak, not whether it's on exactly some specific days, but to reflect on the importance of these three uh, events. So yeah. uh, that's just my little input uh, onto okay, this. But I enjoyed hearing all of the other uh, <laughs> the venerable monks and nuns, uh, you know, in their uh, contributions. And uh, I wish you everybody all the best on this Vesak yeah. day on the path to uh, liberation from Sansar. Thank you, Bhante Rahula. And final remarks of Bhikkhu Bodhi. <laughs> we, uh, so you have heard what other venerable monks and nuns said. Yes. Now, what could be the conclusion, Bhante Bodhi? No, I, basically, I agree with with. Venerable Yoga Vajra Rahula just said, it's not really so important to determine whether these events took place on this date or that date, yeah. but rather to <laughs> celebrate the arising, the appearance of the Buddha in the world, to take yeah. his enlightenment as sort of our ideal, mm -hmm. and to see the Parinibbana as the way of peacefully relinquishing all everything conditioned. Yeah, yeah I think uh, Buddha would be so happy that to see today's uh, discussion, um, like how we monks and nuns with some lay people uh, came together on mm. the virtual platform um, to commemorate uh, birth, enlightenment, and Mahaparinibbana of the Buddha. I think he would say that if we are arguing about whether this event took place in May or February, he would say that this is just like a man who's been hit by a poisoned arrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chula Malika Sutta would be there. And won't, won't let the physician, the surgeon, take the arrow out until he knows the date <laughs> on which the Buddha was born, the date in which he took attained enlightenment, the day, the month in which he passed away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bhante Kusala, you raised your hand? You, you... I, I did one day, uh, two things. Uh, um, so after enlightenment, we know that he spent 45 years spreading Dhamma and then passed away. But I don't know how the full moon is connected with that. The, the other small thing uh, distantly re related to this, maybe uh, saying something like how uh, the full moon connects with our practice, uh, which means uh, 
like the ocean waves change based on the moon, full moon, and we are affected uh, as humans too, in a certain way, that we feel like we are drawn more towards spirit. I don't know, I feel that way. We are more drawn towards spirituality, on, especially on Vesak full moon day, um, and also on other full moon days. So um, I would think that these events did take place on Vesak full moon day because of that. Um, but now, because of the scholarly questions we have about the dates, uh, I will also <laughs> do a bit of digging about this later. Thank you. Thank you. And I think uh, uh, we, we all have to do more meditation to develop jhana, uh, rupa jhana, arupa jhana, to develop the pubbe nivasana satyana, uh, to remember all these exact events of our own life and also others, including the Buddha. So, the problem is, you know, even after someone meditating and saying, oh, I saw it, nobody would believe it. Now everybody goes, <laughs> everybody has to see it in the canon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what's really important is the key message of the Buddha. The birth of the Buddha is the birth of the enlightenment, birth of the light. And, uh, and of course, uh, that we should celebrate. And uh, the key message of the Buddha is, uh, as we all chant uh, all the time, to refrain from doing all the bad things, doing all the good deeds, and purifying our own mind. So this is what we all have to practice every day. So I'm very grateful to all of you. And thank you all for wishing me a happy birthday. <laughs> I can't believe I'm 50 now, <laughs> and, but I'm very happy. Uh, and uh, uh, on, on my birthday weekend, we also had this uh, real Vesak Day celebration around the world. And today we had this unique discussion and we I'm very blessed to have all of you, to see you, all of you, uh, it's a great blessing for me and also blessings for all our uh, friends who are watching us on Facebook and, and YouTube. So uh, let us invite uh, Venerable Sarnapala, uh, who also has my name, uh, from Vancouver to recite the Ova the Patimok uh, verses today. Okay, well, Sarnapala, finally, the Triple Gym bless you a happy uh, your 50th birthday. Thank you. Namo tasse bagavato arahato samma sambuddhasse Sabbe papasse akarenang Use latse upe sampeda Sachit pariyo dapenang Etang Buddha Nasasanang Kanti Paremang Tapo Titika Nibbanang Paremang Vadanti Buddha Nahi Pabjito Parupagati Samano hoti parang vihet yantu Anupavado anupagato Pati mokhecha sangvaru Matanyutache bhatta Tasming Pantanche Sayana Senang Aditite Ayogo Etang Buddha Sasenang Sadu Sadu Sadu. Venerable Sarupala, you have beautifully, beautifully, beautifully recited the Patimokka uh, verses. 
it uh, uh, took us to the time of the Buddha, the ancient time. And uh, it was beautifully done. So I'm very grateful to you. So once again, uh, a very big thank you to each and every uh, monk and nun. And um, um, I'm very grateful to uh, Bhante Bodhi for bringing up this amazing question, an academic question. So it's a suggestion for everyone. Maybe you can do a, a PhD <laughs> on this thesis. <laughs> So uh, we are going to meet again in two weeks time and I would like to invite all of you to join, including the lay people. So thank you. Good night from Canada. May all blessings be with you. Sadhu, 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 Bhante, Sadhu. Happy birthday, Bhante. Thank you, thank you. Sadhu, <laughs> Sadhu.